Hi there. So the focus of this video is to go over the steps that uh, are necessary to produce a well-crafted or well-written persuasive paragraph or a persuasive essay. And so what I want to do is I'm going to go over the steps that you'd need to take in order to uh, organize yourself well. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a graphic organizer that we'll be able to use uh, with our research and help us organize our information in a way that will uh, allow us to stay on topic and allow us to produce some really uh, high quality work that we can be proud of. So here's a, a basic visual of how the organizer will look. You have your topic, your introduction, you have subtopic one, two, and three, the supporting sentences that will go along with each subtopic. And then below that, you would have a spot maybe where you want to offer some personal thoughts if that's something that you're being asked to do. And then finally, you have your conclusion. Uh, when you're working, you want to uh, look over your research and see, all right, what are some of my strongest points that I could come up with and utilize them here, all right? So I'm gonna get into now showing you how to create this particular model in Google Slides. The next thing we want to do is log into our Google Classroom or Google account and open Google Slides. So what we need to do is we need to go log into our Google account, which I already am, and we're going to click the waffle menu and go to Google Slides. From here, we're going to select a blank document because we want to start from scratch. So I'm just going to select that. And I always think the best thing to do is to name your file right when you start. Otherwise, you end up forgetting and you have like a million things called untitled, which you'll find in some of your folders. So I'm going to call this uh, persuasive template one. Then what we're going to do is we're going to just click and drag on the workspace here and we're just going to delete those text boxes. The next thing we want to do is we want to make this match up with a regular piece of paper that uh, that people have access to for their printers and we're going to go file and we're going to go to page setup at the bottom and here it's set for widescreen which would be for like your screen on a monitor or on a projector or a TV and we're going to go to custom and we're going to go with the papers dimensions which would be eight and a half in inches by eleven. Okay, whoops, not 114 by 11 and hit apply. So now, all right, so the next step is to create our, uh, our template. So what we're going to use is our text box. So I'm gonna grab my text box, the little T here at the top, and uh, I'm just gonna move this wider. Now, just go a little bit wider. So I'm gonna go grab the text box and what I'm going to do first is I'm going to just make a nice little box at the top here, like so. And if I click off of it, it's invisible. So I wanna click on it again. And I'm going to go over here to where it says border color and border weight. I'm gonna give it a border color. We'll just keep it simple here, go with black. And if you want, you can make the black line so that you can see it, four pixels, or you can make it like two pixels, whatever you want. Two pixels seems to work quite nicely. So there we have that. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna double click inside that box and I'm going to just put topic, okay? So that will tell our students to put a topic there or tell you to put your topic there. All right, so that's going to be our topic. And then what we're going to do is we're going to make another text box. And so this one here, I'm just gonna draw it kind of like so. I actually will do it like this, okay? And that's going to be for our subtopic, so sub topic topic one okay and again I'm going to select that I put a black border on it and we use the line with the uh, for thickness of uh, two and so I have that so now I'm going to uh, say uh, copy this so each computer is a little bit different so command C and click off it command V and I'll get another one and I can move that over and just space it nicely and then I can do the same thing again, Command C, Command V, and I can move that one over as well. So if I hold Shift down, I can highlight all of them uh, by clicking on them, and then I can center this if I wish. Okay, so that's just for those of you who want things to be perfect, which is probably a good thing. Okay, so here we have subtopic two and subtopic three. All right, so we have those down, so a person can now write what this is going to be about, what this is going to be about, and what this will be about as well. Now, let's just keep this simple for ourselves, and we're just gonna do the shift and click on each one of those, 
and I'm going to now copy those, Command C and Command V, and I'm going to just grab that, center it a little bit, find that little, you can see the little markers on the side show that it's evenly spaced, and while they're all highlighted, I can now pull this down, like so, okay? So now I have my supporting information. All right, so now we have the place where they can start, a person can start recording all the information that pertains to their subtopic. Okay, now we've got this nice box already here, so I'm going to command C it and I'm going to command V it, and I'm going to drop this down to the bottom here, like so, and this will be personal thoughts or personal reflection. I have that there. And I'll click that, and I'll command C that, command V, and I'll drop this down, and we're going to run out a little bit of space, which is okay. And we're just going to put conclusion. So it's never going to be perfect the first time you try it. I'm actually pretty impressed that I was close. So I'm just going to go like this, pull this up a little bit, okay? Grab these and pull them up a little bit, and I'll match this, center it. So now we have this template made, what we want to do is we want to lock everything down. That way we can make sure that the people using it uh, don't end up moving things around and causing themselves unnecessary stress and trying to get it back to its original state. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go to File, okay, so File over here, and what we're going to do is we're going to download it. And what we're going to do is we're going to download it as a JPEG or PNG. Let's go with PNG. So we're going to download it as a PNG and I'm going to just go grab that file. We have the template downloaded. What we need to do is create a new document. I'm going to go to the corner here and select the slide icon and go to the slide panel here and create a new document. So to save time, I'm just going to fast forward through this so you don't. Now we have our document the size we want it. We want to apply the template background. Here we go to slide and we go to change background. Here we can select choose image and we can then say browse or you could drag your file there, but since my whole screen is taken up by my window, I'm just going to go find the file, and there it is. A cool feature in Max is if you select the file and you're not sure if it's the right one, you can just hit your space bar and we'll zoom in and show you. You also have a little window here that shows it as well. I'm going to hit open. It's going to upload it, and I can say done. And now you'll see that it is here, which is wonderful. The background is not very useful yet though because we can't add text to it. So I'm going to create some text boxes here and like I showed you before, if we click off of it, they're not really visible. So we want to make them visible. And so we could put a line around them. Uh, it's not necessarily using our, our line border. But what I'm going to do is just, I'm going to just actually make them just a shade of gray. Okay. So there we have one spot where text can be entered. And, and then I'm going to do the same thing. I'll just command C, command V. I will save that. And I'm going to then do the same thing throughout the whole entire document. Again, I'll fast forward through this so you don't have to watch me. Just remember that if you hold shift down, you can select multiple items at once and copy them at the same time. Now we have our places where text can be entered, and I know these can still be moved, but it's much easier for someone to realize, oh, I moved this and move it back into the correct location. So uh, if you are using this, you can now go inside here and say, what's my topic? Maybe it is school uniforms. And that might be a good topic that you'll have, and then you'll have your subtopics and the information that supports it, personal thought, and a conclusion.
So anyways, I hope you enjoy this video and uh, maybe you'll come back and check out some other ones. Take care.